Why does a perfectly seaworthy ship get abandoned by its crew in the middle of the ocean? How does an entire crew vanish without a trace, never to be heard from again? Listen closely to the tale of the legendary ghost ship Mary Celeste, the various theories regarding the crew's enigmatic disappearance, and the evidence that shows what most likely happened. The Mary Celeste was an American brigantine that set sail from New York Harbor on November 7, 1872. It was delivering 1,701 barrels of denatured alcohol to Genoa, Italy. On board the Mary Celeste was a crew of eight people, all highly experienced and respectable sailors, who were specifically chosen by Captain Benjamin Spooner Briggs. It is important to note that Captain Briggs is part of the consortium that invested in the major refit of the Mary Celeste prior to its voyage. He was also responsible for overseeing the entire renovation, preparing the ship for its first trip. The repair cost $10,000, a huge amount of money, especially during that time. Along with the crew, Captain Briggs also brought his wife Sarah and two-year-old daughter Sophia Matilda on the voyage. His seven-year-old son Arthur was left with his grandmother because of his studies. Everything seemed normal, the weather was good, there was nothing problematic about the cargo, and the ship was quite sound. Nobody expected that just a month later it would be found abandoned, drifting near the Azores Islands in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean with no crew in sight. It was in the afternoon of December 4th when a crew member of the Canadian brig De Gratia sighted a ship at full sail drifting toward them, just six miles away. The sailor alerted Captain Morehouse, who became suspicious due to the ship's unsteady manner. As they neared the ship, they sent signals to get the crew's attention. They didn't get a response, so the captain sent the first and second mate of the De Gratia over. There was slight damage on the sails. Two hatches were open and one of the ship's pumps were dismantled. The hold had around three and a half feet of water. In the captain's cabin, the crew found some of the captain's personal possessions scattered around, including a sheathed sword underneath the bed. They noticed that a sextant, chronometer, navigation book and the ship's register were missing. As for the crew's things, they were still neatly stowed away. There was still food and water in storage, enough to feed the crew for six months. But no matter how hard the two men searched, they couldn't find a living soul on board. The Mary Celeste was completely abandoned, and the lifeboat was gone. The missing lifeboat and compass seemed to suggest that the crew abandoned the ship due to an emergency. But the weather was fine, and the ship was quite sound. There were no signs of a struggle or a fight. The cargo was untouched. There was no food under preparation in the galley, indicating the crew left in a hurry. Everything was neatly stored away. Murder, mutiny, and piracy seemed unlikely with the state of the ship and cargo as they were. So, what exactly happened? Upon checking the captain's logs, they found that the Mary Celeste was met with rough seas and strong winds for most of the trip. More importantly, they found that the last entry in the log was dated two weeks before their encounter, November 25th. It showed that the ship was just six miles northeast of Santa Maria, one of the Azores Islands. This was 500 miles away from their current location. With the mystery of the Mary Celeste still unsolved, Captain Morehouse decided to bring the ship to Gibraltar. Maybe they could get a salvage award. Three of the De Gratia's experienced sailors, including the first mate, Oliver de Vaux, were placed in the Mary Celeste. Despite the good weather, the journey was slow due to the lack of crew members on each ship. Finally, both ships reached Gibraltar. De Gratia docked on December 12th, while Mary Celeste arrived the following day due to fog. It didn't take long for the news about the enigmatic disappearance of Mary Celeste's crew to spread. Some were suspicious of the De Gratia crew. After all, under maritime law, a share of a derelict ship's value, as well as the cargoes, will go to the crew that brought it in. On December 17th, a salvage court hearing was held in Gibraltar. 
The Chief Justice, Sir James Cochrane, heeded the proceedings. Gibraltar's Attorney General Frederick Solly Flood believed that the truth behind the mystery of the Mary Celeste was alcohol and foul play. An examination of the Mary Celeste was conducted by John Austin on December 23rd. Austin stated in his report that there were cuts on the sides of the bow, as well as traces of blood on the captain's sword. The ship didn't seem to have suffered any damage from heavy weather. Another examination, this time conducted by Royal Naval Captains, had the same result. Aside from the cuts, they also saw a deep mark on one of the ship's rails, possibly caused by an axe, as well as bloodstains. Both reports were sent to the Boards of Trade in London on January 22, 1873, along with Flood's conclusion. He stated that the crew murdered the captain, his family, and the ship's officers after they got drunk from the alcohol in the cargo. Allegedly, they cut each side of the bow to create an illusion of a collision before leaving on the lifeboat. Unfortunately for Flood, there were many holes in his conclusion. First, the alcohol in the cargo cannot be consumed. Second, scientific analysis showed that the stains on the sword and the ship were not blood. Third, a U.S. Navy report commissioned by the American consul in Gibraltar stated that the cuts on the bow were caused by the ship's timbers interacting with the sea. Because of the lack of evidence supporting his conclusion, Flood was forced to release the Mary Celeste on February 25, 1873. Unfortunately, the unsolved mystery and continued doubts regarding the Mary Celeste caused the salvage award to be quite low. The award was set at around one-fifth to one-sixth of the value of the ship and cargo. Each of the members of the De Gratia crew received around $830 in today's money from the salvage award. The Mary Celeste moved on to carry cargo for its new owners. However, it couldn't seem to escape experiencing unfortunate events, which led some to believe that the ship was cursed. Theories regarding the disappearance of the Mary Celeste crew persisted over the years. Now, the Mary Celeste was not the first ship to get abandoned in the middle of the Atlantic, but the mysterious disappearance of its crew made it unusual and noteworthy. No survivors have ever been found. There were no bodies either. Stories about this mystery of the sea were published with explanations ranging from the mundane to the mysterious. Some of the theories included an iceberg, a sea quake, a giant squid, and a malfunctioning pump. In the decade that followed, facts could no longer be separated from fiction, but no one was interested anymore in discovering the truth. That is, until 12 years later, when Arthur Conan Doyle published a short story about a ghost ship named Mari Celeste. In Arthur Conan Doyle's story, titled J. Habakkuk Jefferson's Statement, a survivor of the ghost ship told a tale about a former slave seeking revenge by killing all the passengers. Because of this, the public's curiosity about the missing crew was aroused once again. The story even caused Flood to reopen the investigation. Unfortunately, there were still no answers to be found. So, what did happen to the Mary Celeste and its crew? Here's what we know. Piracy was out of the question. The ship wasn't ransacked. All the crew's personal possessions were still neatly packed, and the six-month supply of food and water was untouched. How could pirates board the ship and then take nothing? Mutiny seemed unlikely. According to accounts, Captain Briggs was a fair and responsible captain. He was a teetotaler and a devout Christian, regularly reading the Bible. Simply put, he had a good reputation, and he personally chose each member of his crew who were all respectable, experienced sailors, people unlikely to rebel. Murder was also highly improbable. The theory that the crew of the De Gratia were the ones who murdered the people on board of the Mary Celeste for salvage money could not be proven. There was even a theory suggesting that the crew was killed by Briggs in a fit of religious mania. But there was no sign of violence on board. The cuts and stains were all explained away by experts. Some theorized that Captain Briggs abandoned ship as part of an insurance scam. The ship was overinsured, and Briggs was part of the consortium that owned it. 
or he and Morehouse were in cahoots, planning to share the salvage award between the two of them. But he was highly respected in his field. He didn't have a reputation of deceiving people for money. Moreover, he couldn't just disappear because Briggs still has a son waiting for him to come back. What other evidence do we have? The cargo, as mentioned earlier, was still on board. Nine of the barrels were empty, but these were made from red oak unlike the rest of the barrels, which were made of white oak. Red oak is more porous, which has a higher chance of leaking. One of the pumps of the ship was left dismantled, and there was flooding in the hold. Aside from the flooding, the ship was completely sound. The crew's belongings were still in place. What was missing? The sextant, chronometer, navigation book, ship's register, and the lifeboat. Based on these facts, there's only one possibility left. What most likely happened is the captain, his family, and his crew left the boat voluntarily. At the very least, Briggs had time to go to his cabin and get his navigational equipment before abandoning ship. In addition, the only reason why they would leave the ship would be if they were in danger. Captain Briggs was a seasoned sailor who was aware of the dangers of sailing. He already lost family members to the sea before, including three siblings. He would be very prudent, unlikely to take risks when it involves the lives of his family and crew. In fact, he even delayed the start of their journey for two days because of bad weather. As for the danger that caused them to abandon ship, there are two possibilities. One theory is that fumes from the denatured alcohol caused an explosion which led to the crew abandoning ship. Now, there was no sign of any fire or explosion on the ship, no scorch marks on the barrels. But according to Dr. Andrea Sella of UCL, it is possible for an explosion caused by alcohol leaking to occur without damaging the hold. She created a replica of the Mary Celeste's hold and simulated an explosion. According to her results, it is quite possible for a big explosion to occur, big enough to blow open the hatches. Since Captain Briggs is a conscientious and responsible leader, it wouldn't be surprising for him to get his people off the ship as soon as possible. Then again, there were no signs of people leaving the ship in a panic, which would be the case if an explosion did occur. So, what most likely happened is our other possibility. Captain Briggs believed that the ship was no longer seaworthy and they were in danger of sinking. Based on oceanography data and the notes made by Attorney General Solly Flood on the last five days on the ship's log, Mary Celeste was 120 miles west of where they thought they were. This may be due to a faulty chronometer. Moreover, just one day before they reached the Azores, the ship changed its course and headed north. One possible reason may be bad weather. But bad weather and a faulty chronometer is not enough for an experienced captain like Briggs to abandon ship. Remember the dismantled pump and the flooded hull? Prior to its extensive renovation, the Mari Celeste went on a voyage carrying coal. Construction debris coupled with coal dust may have infiltrated the pumps, causing one to fail. This could explain why there was a dismantled pump on board. As for the flooding, it wasn't unusual for the hull of a ship to have some water. However, a disabled pump would be unable to help the captain measure the amount of seawater in the hull. According to the last entry in the ship's log, the Mary Celeste was facing rough weather, but there was land in sight, just six miles away, in fact. Since Briggs could not determine if his ship was going to stay afloat, he might have felt that this might be the best time to leave the ship. So, they did. But why did they disappear? With inclement weather and a faulty chronometer, what most likely happened was that the crew became disoriented. Instead of getting nearer to land, they might have found themselves drifting further into the open ocean. They may have not brought enough food and water, thinking they would reach land in a short amount of time. It took nine days for the De Gratia to find the Mary Celeste. The crew on board the lifeboat may have been truly lost by then. As for the fate of the Mary Celeste, it got wrecked off the coast of Haiti in November 1884. The captain deliberately ran it aground into a reef in order to get insurance money. He didn't succeed, 
Instead, he got charged with fraud. He died soon after. If you love our content and want to support the channel, feel free to check our web shop where you can find exclusive true crime merch brought to you by Bad Things.